the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction and Enforcement Act, short formed or abbreviated to UCCJEA, governs issues of interstate lawsuits involving children. So what would you do when you find yourself in a custody battle where one party and the child reside, uh, for instance, in California, and another uh, parent or party resides in Texas? Well, you look to this uh, Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction and Enforcement Act as your elements to determine which court is the proper court to enter orders that would affect possession and access. The UCCJEA should be interpreted to avoid jurisdictional competition and conflict with courts of other states, to discourage the use of the interstate system for continuing controversies over child custody and to deter abductions of children. The UCCJEA achieves this purpose by prioritizing what we call home state and jurisdiction, which helps to avoid the jurisdictional competition and conflict that results when courts in different states determine jurisdiction based on subjective factors. The UCCJEA provides the rules by which the courts around the nation can determine which state, district, territory, or nation should exercise jurisdiction in child custody proceedings. Each state, plus the District of Columbia, Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, has adopted the UCCJEA. These uniform rules creates a mechanism for the courts of different jurisdictions to determine which court should hear the suit. The UCCJEA further addresses federal enactments of prior inconsistent case law. The UCCA JEA in Texas is found in the Texas Family Law Code, Chapter 152. The UCC JEA ensures that its provisions trump any other laws that could frustrate its purposes. If a provision of Chapter 152 of the Texas Family Code conflicts with a provision of either Title V of the Texas Family Code or another statute or rule, of Texas and the conflict cannot be reconciled, then chapter 152 prevails. Where this comes up most frequently if you're in a divorce is that Texas requires children born of the marriage to be addressed in a divorce. And you'll have uh, some judges that will um, try to assume jurisdiction of a child that may be in Mexico or maybe in Michigan, and if the child's not been in Texas six months uh, and you file your UCCJEA, then uh, that is proper to um, decline jurisdiction. There is no jurisdiction, and so uh, it's proper to ask the court to grant the divorce only and not address any of the child issues, and that is in the um, uh, family code that... Uh, in Texas, you must uh, enjoin and do the suit affecting parent-child relationship. But then 152 says, no, you can't do that if the child hasn't lived in Texas six months. Now, the UCCJEA does not cover all jurisdictional issues affecting children. Jurisdiction issues regarding children uh, as to child support are addressed by the Uniform Interstate Family Support Act, UFSA. A court's jurisdiction to hear child support issue does not confer jurisdiction upon that court to determine issues of custody or visitation. A parent's travel expenses for visiting a child are not a child custody determination. So a trial court that only has jurisdiction under the UCCJA may lack jurisdiction to impose a monetary obligation for those travel expenses of a parent. The UCCJA also does not govern an adoption proceeding or proceeding pertaining to authorization for emergency medical care of a child. Now, under subject matter jurisdiction, if a party, potential party, or a child resides out of the state, you consult the UCCJEA. A trial court and the attorneys facing a family lawsuit in which at least one 
of the parents, one person act as a parent, or a child resides in a different state, district, or territory, other than the parent who is acting as a parent should examine subject matter jurisdiction and ensure that it has jurisdiction before hearing the suit. Your failure to do this can result in a lot of time and money spent to obtain a ruling that is eventually overturned on appeal, even if the issue of subject matter jurisdiction was not raised at the trial level. Subject matter jurisdiction over custody issues in Texas would be governed by the UCCJEA. Generally, there are three jurisdictional elements. Jurisdiction over the subject matter, jurisdiction over the person, power to render particular relief awarded. Even if the court has personal jurisdiction over the parties, jurisdiction for a child custody proceeding is controlled by subject matter jurisdiction. Subject matter jurisdiction exists when the nature of the case falls within a category of cases the court is empowered under applicable statutory and constitutional provisions to adjudicate. Subject matter jurisdiction is essential to the authority of a court to decide a case. Subject matter jurisdiction is never presumed. Subject matter jurisdiction cannot be waived and can be raised at any time. Even if a party agrees to subject matter jurisdiction in immediate settlement agreement, that subject matter jurisdiction cannot be conferred by consent, waiver, or estoppel. The UCCJEA determines whether the trial court has subject matter jurisdiction. When a court lacks subject matter jurisdiction over a proceeding, any orders it renders in that proceeding are void. An order that the trial court has no power or jurisdiction to enter is void. When an order is void, the relator, who's the person who would file for mandamus, which is the relief requested from the appellate court to render that order or declare that order void, is not required to show any lack of adequate appellate remedy. Mandamus relief is appropriate because the question of subject matter jurisdiction is a legal question and the appellate court reviews the court's ruling under a de novo standard. A trial court abuses its discretion if it fails to analyze or apply the law correctly. A writ of mandamus is the appropriate means to require a trial court to comply with all of the UCCJEA jurisdictional provisions. What is a child custody determination? It means a judgment, decree, or other order of a court providing for legal custody, physical custody, custody, or visitation. Physical custody means the physical care and supervision of a child. Visitation means the possession of or access to a child. Child custody proceedings mean proceedings in which legal custody, physical custody, or visitation are requested as forms of relief to be given by the trial court. A home state under the UCCJEA makes the home state of a child the primary factor in determining which state has jurisdiction over all subsequent child custody proceedings. Home state means the state in which a child lived with a parent or a person acting as a parent for at least six consecutive months immediately before the commencement of a child custody proceeding. In the case of a child less than six months of age, the term means the state in which the child lived from birth with a person or a person acting as a parent. A period of temporary absence of a parent or a person acting as a parent is part of that period. A child's physical location is the central factor to be considered when de determining a child's home state. The UCCJEA was intended to make the determination of jurisdiction more straightforward. The word live strongly connotes physical presence. It is significant that the legislature used the term lived as opposed to resided or was domiciled. The test for residence or domicile typically involves an inquiry into the person's intent. The Texas Supreme Court concluded that the legislature used the word lived precisely to avoid complicating the determination of a child's home state, which inquiries into the state of mind of the child or the child's adult caregivers. The UCCJEA should be construed in such a way as to strengthen rather than undermine 
the certainty that prioritizing home state jurisdiction was intended to promote. And therefore, a court should not determine where the child lived based on the party's subjective intent. Except for purposes of enforcement, a Texas court shall treat an Indian tribe or a foreign country as a state. Persons acting as a parent. The UCCJEA expressly applies not just to parents, but also to people such as grandparents who serve in the role of parents. Persons acting as a parent means a person other than a parent who has physical custody of the child or had had physical custody for a period of six consecutive months, including any temporary absence within one year immediately before the commencement of a child custody proceeding and has been awarded legal custody by a court or claims a legal right to legal custody under the law of this state. The information you would be required to file with your lawsuit as you are filing a lawsuit for the custody of the child, the parties to a suit are charged with the task of alerting the court that the UCCJEA applies to the suit. The parties alert the court by providing the information required under section 152.209. Each party in a child custody proceeding must file this information in its first pleading or as an attached affidavit. If reasonable, ascertainable, unless each party resides in Texas or a party alleges in an affidavit or pleading under oath that the health, safety, or liberty of a party or child would be jeopardized by disclosure of identifying information. In the later case, information must be sealed and may not be disclosed to the other party or the public unless the court orders the disclosure to be made after hearing in which the court takes into consideration the health, safety, and liberty of the party or child and determines that the disclosure is in the interest of justice. Unless each party resides in Texas, each party must state under oath the child's present address or whereabouts. The places where the child has lived during the last five years and the names, present addresses of the persons with whom the child has lived during that period. In addition, each party must state under oath whether the party has participated as a party or witness or in any other capacity in any other proceeding concerning the custody of or visitation with a child. And if so, the I Ident identity of the court, the case number, and the date of the child custody determination, if any. If they know of any proceeding that could affect the current proceeding, including proceedings for enforcement and proceedings relating to domestic violence, protective orders, termination of parental rights, and adoptions, and if so, you have to identify the court, the case number, and the nature of the proceeding. And if you know of the names and addresses of any persons not a party to the proceeding who has physical custody of the child or claims rights of legal custody or physical custody of or visitation with the child and if so, state the names and addresses of those persons. How a court would decide the initial child custody jurisdiction is uh, the application of the facts as to the elements that I have just uh, briefed you on. Texas would be the home state is the central factor in determining whether or not you're in uh, proper to be in Texas. Texas is the home state on the date of the proceeding or Texas was the home state of the child within six months before the commencement of the proceeding and the child is absent from the state, but a parent or a person acting as a parent continues to live in this state. If these two elements are met, Texas may have jurisdiction to make a initial child custody determination. The significant connection jurisdiction is also another factor that the court will look at. The second possible means of a Texas court having jurisdiction to make an initial custody determination is through significant connection jurisdiction. Significant connection jurisdiction does not have the same priority as home state jurisdiction. A court 
must give home state jurisdiction priority over significant connection jurisdiction. Significant connection jurisdiction under the UCCJA is only at issue when the child has no home state. A Texas court has jurisdiction to make an initial custody determination if either of the following situations occur. A court of another state does not have jurisdiction under its equivalent um, section of 152.201A1 because its state is not the home state of the child or its state either was not the home state of the child within six months before the commencement of the proceeding or its state was the home state of the child within six months before the commencement of the proceeding but neither a parent nor person acting as a parent continues to live in the state or a court of the home state of the child has declined to exercise jurisdiction on the grounds that this state is the more appropriate forum under section 152.207 of the uh, Texas Family Code. And both of the following situations occur. The child and the child's parents or the child and at least one person or a person acting as a parent have a significant connection with Texas other than mere physical presence and substantial evidence is available in Texas concerning the child's care, protection, training, and personal relationships. Now what happens, all states would have jurisdiction have declined because Texas is a more appropriate forum. Subject matter jurisdiction can also arise if all the other states that would have had jurisdiction decline in favor of a Texas court because Texas is more convenient or appropriate form. A Texas court has jurisdiction to make an initial child custody determination if all the courts of other states having jurisdiction under their equivalents of Section 152.201 have declined to exercise jurisdiction on the grounds that Texas is the more appropriate forum to determine the custody of the child under section 152.207 of the Texas Family Code. Jurisdiction by default, if no state would have jurisdiction, a court may have subject matter jurisdiction. For this reason, there is always a state in which child custody proceeding can occur. A Texas court has jurisdiction to make an initial child custody determination if no court of any other state would have jurisdiction under the criteria as specified under chapter 152. Generally where this happens is you have uh, migrants who are coming into the uh, country at the border and they've traveled perhaps from Haiti to Mexico and then they arrive in Texas and so you have uh, also people who may work um, uh, in um, transitory positions amongst the states and they go from California to uh, Washington and then um, come over into Oklahoma. Maybe they're working in um, oil and gas uh, and they are in Texas for a while, Louisiana, go up to Oklahoma. And so uh, they move around. The child is not in school because the child is under the age of five and then uh, you have a situation where Texas can assume jurisdiction. The inconveni inconvenient forum provision permits a court of different states to defer to another because another court may have better form for making the child custody determination. A Texas court, Texas court has jurisdiction under Chapter 152 to make an initial child custody determination it may decline its jurisdiction at any time if the court determines that it's an in inconvenient forum under the circumstances that the court of another state is more appropriate forum. The issue of appropriate forum may be raised upon motion of the party, the court's own motion, or request of another court. A declaratory judgment may be used to declare rights under Section 150.2207 of the Texas Family Code before determining whether... Texas is an inconvenient forum, a Texas court shall consider whether it is appropriate for a court of another state to exercise jurisdiction. For this purpose, the court shall allow the parties to submit information and shall consider all relevant factors, including whether domestic violence has occurred, 
and is likely to occur in the future and which state would best protect the parties and the child, the length of time the child has resided outside this state, the distance between the court of this state and the court in the state that would assume jurisdiction, the relative financial circumstances of the parties, an agreement of the parties to which state would assume jurisdiction, the nature and location of the evidence required to resolve the pending litigation, including testimony of the child, the ability of the court of each state to decide the issue uh, as fast as possible and the procedures necessary to present the evidence, and the familiarity of the court of each state with the facts and issues in the pending litigation. Generally, this comes up where you seek a modification, and I've had it come up where one uh, of the parents had moved to Arkansas and was allowed to take the child to Arkansas. And in that case, you have a court of continuing jurisdiction here in Texas, and uh, the uh, court of continuing jurisdiction uh, allowed Arkansas to assume jurisdiction uh, when a modification was filed in uh, Texas courts to uh, modify that underlying order. If Texas court determines that an inconvenient form and that a court of another state is more appropriate form, the court shall stay the proceedings upon condition that a child custody proceeding shall be promptly commenced in another designated state and may impose any other condition the court considers just and proper. So what happens here is a party comes in and asks that they be allowed uh, to uh, file a case in another state and then never file it. So then that's where the inconvenient forum needs to also accompany evidence that a lawsuit has been filed in the convenient forum. If the court decides to decline jurisdiction because a court of another state is a more convenient forum, the suit is not transferred to the other court. The family code contemplates only interstate transfers. It provides no mechani mechanism for an interstate transfer. So what happens is when you want to domesticate a foreign order in Texas and Texas assumes jurisdiction, there are rules that neither parent should reside in the state for which the initial child custody was uh, given. And so it's a similar situation where um, you um, in Texas, they don't transfer the case. I mean, you still have a case here in Texas, but it's just they assume jurisdiction. So basically the case is abated. And then if you come in and you try to file again, I mean, you can, but you need to have the child in Texas to do that. If the child resides in the um, other state, then uh, uh, that court issues a final order. Then there are rules for domestication of foreign orders that you would be required to follow. A Texas court may decline to exercise its jurisdiction. Child custody determination is incidental to an action for divorce or another proceeding while still retaining jurisdiction over the divorce of the other proceeding. The language of 152.207d is discretionary, not mandatory. While declining jurisdiction over the child custody proceeding, a trial court may retain jurisdiction over a divorce but is not required to do so. Jurisdiction declined by reason of conduct. This is generally where you have people who the term we use is baby snatch, kidnapping. They take the children and flee the jurisdiction. The UCCJEA strongly discourages a party from illegally or inappropriately hiding, removing, or restraining a child in order to gain an advantage in a jurisdiction in an original child custody proceeding or a modification of a child custody proceeding. Courts simply do not permit parents to kidnap children. The statutory framework of the UCC JEA as adopted in Chapter 152 was particularly designed to deter parents from abducting children for the purposes of obtaining custody awards. To allow a parent to deliberately secrete a child to Texas for the purpose of obtaining a child custody determination in a state which would make a mockery of the statute. Furthermore, the purpose of the UCC JEA is to avoid the relitigation of child custody issues. Uh, my name is Michael Busby. I am a Houston family law and divorce attorney and I thank you for watching.